Hello Virgo, thank you for joining me for your year 2020 horoscope forecast. This is for the sun or for the ascendant. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honored if you did so now. Please also click or tap on the alert bell. This year begins with the solar return. This set of influences is hugely influential providing a background story for the whole of the year. It begins in particular style this year with a wonderful alliance between Mercury, your ruler, and also Jupiter, the planet of opportunity. Now they're combining in the sign of Capricorn, which for you is your fifth solar house. This is about self-expression. It's about the things that really inspire us. It's about love. It's about the things that we enjoy playing around. But it has, over the last couple of years, taken quite a heavy hit from Saturn, the planet of structure, but also of restriction. Now, Saturn continues for part of this year in this sector. But the significant thing with this alliance between Mercury and Jupiter is that it also forges an angle, a really enabling angle, to Uranus, the planet of surprises, the planet of freedom and independence, which has been in a terrific location for you for about nine months at the start of this year, although it did have a brief sojourn through the sign of Taurus in the year before. So progressively, this has been asking you to be a bit more daring in your approach. But Saturn has been like a counter influence, at times making you feel a little bit more inhibited. But this combination at the very start of the year really asks you to embrace your ideas, which can be innovative, groundbreaking and progressive. Also at the start of this year, Mars, the planet of passion, is in the part of your scope to do with your everyday communication. This is likely to mean that if you have something to say in 2020, you're going to say it with gusto, with real meaning. You can be very persuasive on the back of this too. Now, in your sector of relating is the moon combining with Neptune. This is an acutely sensitive combination, suggesting that your relationships can benefit hugely this year from an innate ability to tune in to how people feel, obviously the people that are meaningful to you, with a real perception but also at times it could leave you feeling almost hypersensitive and sometimes a little confused about exactly what you want. But if we take the point between the sun and the moon at the turn of the year, the solar return, we see uh, the midpoint come into the sign of Aquarius, where it links with Venus, the planet of love and attraction. This year you're going to do really well in your work situation and I think one of the reasons for that is that Venus is going to be going through the sign of Gemini for four months from the 7th of April. This is going to see you come in, into contact with some influential people who are going to very much like what you have to offer. But this midpoint and the location of Venus suggests your natural inclination to be sacrificing, to try to provide services to people and try to be caring and practical in your approach is actually going to get a karmic reward. Now, by the 10th of this month, we do have a very powerful lunar eclipse. This is in the sign of Cancer, the first month of the year, January, and on the 10th, we've moved on from the solar return, and this particular annular lunar uh, return provides a backdrop of energy for the next six months and it's kind of saying to you that you could be spoilt for choice during that period of time you may have to use your natural discrimination to sift out the th strands and activities which are good for you and have some benefit to your future hopes and those which are distractions but this is a particularly complex eclipse because it's going to be in opposition to Saturn which, as I've said, has been quite a stern influence, but also Pluto, the planet of change, which has been in this part of your scope for, uh, since 2008. So we're kind of in the 12th year. 
But also alongside Saturn, Pluto and the Sun is Ceres, the asteroid of nurturing and also Mercury, which has moved on from that conjunction with Jupiter. What this combination tells us is the more emotional energy of the, uh, of the lunation is going to be challenged by the sternness of Saturn, which is asking you to be very structured in the ideas and self-belief uh, that you have. It can't be too off the cuff, but at the same time, Ceres can almost um, be inhibited by Saturn. So if there's part of you that wants to nurture loved ones, children, your highest hopes, Saturn keeps reminding you to be very serious and think about the practicalities. Well, you might say, well, that's part of my nature anyway, Patrick, and I would agree. But I think we reach a critical point just after this uh, lunar eclipse where Saturn and Pluto become exactly conjunct. For about nine months, they have been very close. So this energy of Pluto pushing change and Saturn seeing you perhaps resisting in some ways is going to reach a high point. And maybe something does have to give. For example, if you're in a very unhappy love relationship, the next six months can be a seminal time. On the other hand, if you have been finding it difficult to move from a role which may be worthy and where you do do your best for others, but doesn't seem to give you much personal satisfaction, this is a point where you're being really pushed to go outside of what you know, what's felt safe, but that could feel rather uncomfortable. What's going to help you enormously is that on the 14th, Venus moves into your opposite sign. On the 17th, Mercury replaces Venus in the sign of Aquarius. Now, Mercury in your sixth solar house is gorgeous because it just brings into play your, your natural precision and talent for being very analytical. But Venus in your opposite sign is absolutely fabulous. And it's possible that you could find yourself really uh, wanting to improve the quality of your interactions with others in general almost straight away. But Mars has relocated on the third into the sign of Sagittarius, which for you is about home and family. So it's possible that any desire to improve that relationship or to improve your self-expression coming from that eclipse could be around someone you're actually very familiar with, but perhaps the balance of power has been a bit out of kilter. Venus gives you the opportunity to use the diplomacy to try to improve things. But that brings us to the transit of the Sun into the sign of Aquarius on the 21st. Now, for many of us, the turn of the year can be a time we're thinking about New Year's resolutions, getting fitter, being more virtuous. And if this is something that's been on your mind and it hasn't quite taken hold, the Sun joining up with Mercury will help you to take it more seriously. But then we have a full moon, and this full moon is in the sign of Leo. And this can, on the 24th, see the last 10 days of this month, and the first uh, around about seven days of February, can see you feeling a little bit sensitive if there is a situation, particularly around your work, where you're not quite sure about where you stand. Now, one of the best ways to deal with this is keep that campaign of diplomacy going because Venus is really going to protect you. It's exalted in the sign of uh, Pisces, so you have this real opportunity to balance the sensitivity of this particular full moon, which is going to be linking in to Uranus, suggesting that maybe something can take on a life force of its own if you let it. But the trick is going to be in not letting it really probe into your subconscious and trigger any secret worries. But Mars is clashing with Neptune as this month comes to a close. And I think that's just saying to you that if there is an interpersonal relationship where you're not quite sure where you stand and you're a little bit confused, your best bet is to keep trying to be as decent as possible. And Venus is going to help you with that process. And on the 24th of January, we have a new moon in Aquarius, which is really asking you to embrace all that's good about looking at nutrition, looking at diet, looking at life organisation, all the things that you shine at anyway are given a supreme boost. But it is true that with Mars squaring with Neptune as this month draws to a close, 
there is the potential for a little bit of confusion around a relationship issue and therefore using the energy that Venus has given you to keep an even kill and to make sure that you do stay in balance when it comes to doing all the things that do give you that sense of order, that sense of peace is going to be very important. Which brings us into February. Now Mercury, your ruler, is going to be making a quick change on the third, moving into your opposite sign of Pisces. It's not so happy here. You will need to concentrate if you're going to keep the good uh, vibes going around those relationship issues. And also it's true to say that on the 8th with Venus, the planet of relating, moving after just one week of February into the deepest, most passionate part of your scope, if you're lucky enough to have met someone since Christmas time, this could be a really powerful time. The bond between you could really deepen and strengthen. Alternatively, with Venus passing over Chiron, if there is a big worry around the financial elements of a close relationship, business or personal, the next week after Venus moves could see a very, very powerful process of discussions and analysis and thinking. All this is going to be supported by the full moon in the sign of Leo. And if there are any insecurities lurking in the background, they're probably going to come to the fore in the next couple of weeks. Fortunately, Mars moves into a gorgeous location on the 16th into the sign of Capricorn, where he is exalted. He loves being here. And in the last two weeks of this month, is going to be forging some very powerful influences. But not before on the 16th, Mercury slams on the brakes and goes into a retrograde. As you know, Mercury retrograde can be tricky. And in your sector of relating, therefore, it's asking you to make sure that if you make any plans or arrangements, the other person does absolutely confirm that they have the same view of these as you do. However, there is a great piece of news on the 18th because that combination between Saturn and Pluto, which has now gone on for 11 months within three degrees of a direct connection, and of course that peaked in January, that comes to an end. Now Saturn is going to make its way into Aquarius for a brief sojourn later this year and then fully into Aquarius in December. But I feel that this can be a bit of a liberating moment for you. It's quite subtle at first, I feel. And in the immediate uh, moment, you could still be quite focused on those relationships. But Mars is asking you to be a bit more daring, particularly if there is someone you really like. And with the sun moving on the 19th, also into Pisces, although Mercury's retrograde is still influential, I think the fact that the sun links brilliantly with Mars, and Mars also links to Uranus, that planet of surprises. This last half of the month can see you in trailblazing form if you can give yourself the encouragement to just go for it and be a little less fearful if things aren't quite perfect. Just see where it leads. There's also a fabulous new moon on the 23rd. This is going to be combining with Black Moon Lilith. This is the part of your nature which is really about your yearnings, your deepest yearnings, and sometimes for forbidden fruits. So if there is someone on the relationship front that you find a little bit naughty and perhaps provocative, don't just dismiss them because they don't absolutely fit on paper every part of your expectations because there may be part of you that you're not quite in tune with that they can bring out which is actually truly exciting. From the 24th to the 27th, the advancing sun meets the retreat in Mercury. But it could give you this combination an opportunity to sort out a relationship issue which has been blighted for some while. So if there is someone where there's been continual cross wires, providing you can try to find a middle ground and not necessarily seek that absolute perfection, some kind of breakthrough is possible. Which brings us into March, uh, Virgo. And at the start of this month, you have three really big influences still in your sector of relating. The Sun, Mercury's retrograde, and Neptune. 
And don't forget that the moon at the turn of the year was combining with Neptune. So there's so much to be gained this year from continuing to be very sensitive to the needs of others, listening to your sixth sense, and at times also trying to prevent yourself from being a bit anxious about wherever people are coming from. And of course with Mercury retrograde that would be entirely understandable. But ironically Mercury reverses back on the 4th into the sign of Aquarius. So there could be a, a, an everyday nitty gritty issue that you need to actually focus on a bit more. Could be to do with an appointment that perhaps has gone awry, will be rescheduled. There may be something to do with an animal or uh, some kind of contact with an aunt or uncle, or perhaps you're going to reschedule an application for a job. On the 5th, however, Venus moves into a glorious location. It moves into your sister Earth sign of Taurus, and it immediately combines with Uranus. This is the push that I was telling you about at the start of the year. If you can stay open-minded and be prepared to push outside your absolute comfort zone, although it may be a, a, a little bit scary at times, it can actually prove to be exhilarating. And there is an opportunity for single Virgos at this point to have some kind of connection to someone hugely charismatic that you really click with. Now, whether this is going to be a long-standing relationship or a bit of a fling, only you will be able to say, but there will be excitement. If you're in a relationship which has really become so predictable that the boredom factor is really creeping in, this combination is asking you to try to find ways to reinvent things between you. So it's not an accusatory thing about, well, you don't do this and so on. That won't work so well. Try to find consensus. That is a big theme for you for this year. Now on the 9th, Jupiter goes alongside Pluto and it's going to be here through to the 4th of December this year. This is an awesomely important combination. Now both are going to go into retrogrades and that can slow down the benefits, but generally this can be very lucky for you if you do want to be much more self-expressive, you have ideas that you want to reach a larger audience, you're artistic or creative in some kind of way, or possibly as far as your love life is concerned, this can also bring a real slice of good fortune. It's very, very powerful indeed. However, it is true to say that from the 5th through to the 10th, the Sun does go alongside Neptune. And that potential to feel a little bit unsure about relationships can be enhanced by this, or you may just feel a whole lot less competitive. And even just coming up against the general challenges that we have in life can see you being much more passive. However, on the 9th, there is a full moon, which occurs in your sign. So if there is a relationship which strictly isn't working for you, you're going to be thinking very carefully about it over the following two weeks. The 10th, however, sees Mercury go forward. That's good news. And on the 16th, it returns to your opposite sign. This is going to help to support any untangling of relationship issues that may have come from that full moon. On the 20th, however, we have the vernal equinox, followed by the sun traveling into the sign of Aries. This is the start of the astrological new year, but for you, it's very much about the deeper strands of life, more psychological strands, anything to do with the things that may have served their purpose in your life that you can naturally see are starting to fade away, a bit like a, a snake shedding its skin, you could really see some true transformation take place in the following month. On the 22nd, Saturn also moves into Aquarius, which for you is about work, it's about fitness, health, diet, all the things that you've been focusing on already this year with those Aquarius transits. But of course, Saturn's a much more serious player. It's going to be moving back into Capricorn on the 1st of July, but in the interim, you could find yourself thinking very seriously about what you do for your work. Now, the 24th sees a new moon, and this new moon in Aries is good if you do want to do better around your long-term finances, or you're uh, uh, feeling more entrepreneurial and creative around your finances, something good can unfold for you in this regard. 
On the 29th, this is something for you to particularly really celebrate, Mercury comes out of shadow. So a relationship tangle can really start to, to come out as you wish. Also Mars moves on the 31st into Aquarius too. Now the combination between uh, Saturn and Mars is very potent and it's going to go on into the first five days of April. It will make you think very carefully about what you do as far as commitments and obligations are concerned. So if you have a job which is not very rewarding, this can be a time when you really start to look at the situation as vacant and really peruse whether there is an opportunity for you to redeploy your skills, talents and dedication to some new uh, environment. Which takes us into April and I've already flagged up a very important event which is occurring on the 7th because Venus then soars right to the top of your horoscope shifting into the sign of Gemini. It's going to be here for four months. This is very unusual. Venus usually takes 28 days to ingress its way, transit through each zodiac sign. The sign of Gemini for you is your connection to the wider world. So this gives you an awesome opportunity to raise your vibration and to achieve much more recognition for your talents. So if you are thinking about redeploying your skills to a new environment, with Saturn and Mars's conjunction, it's how you go about it that's going to be critical to your success. And Venus can be such a boost because it can, quite frankly, be utterly charming. So if you need to meet someone influential, the way you come across is really going to be sweetened by the influence of Venus. So it's a lovely thing for you to look forward to. In a romantic context, Venus going through this area could see you taking a relationship more serious, formalizing it, perhaps even tying the knot, moving in together, looking at property. All these things can be blessed by this transit. Now it's also true to say that on the 8th there is a full moon. And this full moon occurs in Libra, which for you is about everyday expenditure. Is there something that you need to rebalance at this time? Consider it over the following two weeks because there is a clash with Pluto and it's a part of the year when you're asked to be progressive but not too risk-taking with your resources. Now it's also true to say that on the 11th Mercury uh, goes into the sign of Aries. Mercury moving into this area is very good for you to almost have like a forensic ability to get beneath the surface of what people really mean in terms of what they say. Now I think you have a bit of a gift for this anyway, so it's just going to, or a very big gift for it anyway, so it's just going to be super turned up to max. This is great if you are planning anything which requires a lot of research and a lot of analysis of information. However, on the 20th, the sun moves into your sister earth sign of Taurus. And again, just like Venus did, it's going to connect with Uranus. Again, pushing you to think about things in different ways, to take a more lateral view of life. If you're planning a holiday, why not go to somewhere completely different? If you are looking to meet somebody new, don't have too many preconceived ideas of the person that you could click with. In fact, it could be someone who's very, very different that you enjoy their company the most because it's a real complement to your natural organization and thoroughness. Maybe they're going to be someone a bit more arty, a little bit more unpredictable, but it can be like a breath of fresh air. Now in week three, Mercury is forging an awesome angle to Mars. So if ever there was a time that you could do well around a business project, it's certainly at this moment. On the 23rd, there is a new moon in Taurus, and this gives you also the opportunity to be more experimental in your thinking. The 25th, however, does see Pluto slam on the brakes, and it will be in retrograde through to the 4th of October. The 28th, however, sees Mercury, your ruler, join up with uh, Uranus in your ninth solar house. So this can be a fine time to check out uh, educational opportunities, Apply for jobs linked to travel, uh, the tourism industry, uh, maybe being a sales rep, 
anything to do with moving around and engaging with people can really take your fancy as this month draws to a close. As you come into May, a really important event occurs on the 5th. The North Node, the nominal point, which is to do with the kind of emotional gravity of the heavens, that reverses from Cancer into the sign of Gemini. So as you start this month with Venus already in this sign, the North Node augments and will do through to the end of this year your highest hopes when it comes to making progress around goals and ambitions. But because it's quite a spiritual influence, and it's almost to do with the karma of your existence, this could guide you towards some kind of opportunity, which may not be completely obvious at this time. But I think this link with the North Node and Venus is significant and can give you a huge opportunity to get just the right kind of role for you, particularly if you have been feeling rather stuck. But as we enter into this new month, the Sun and Mercury are still in the sign of Taurus. And on the 7th, there's a full moon in Scorpio, which faces the Sun's combination with Mercury. This suggests that you could have a conversation with someone where perhaps they're going to be particularly cool and quite uh, logical and perhaps even philosophical about making their point. Whereas on the other hand, you may react to this, perhaps feeling that they're not really hearing your point of view. But remember, at the start of this year, Mars gave you an enormous lift by being in the sign of Scorpio. So if you can stay patient, you can be very persuasive, even if there is some kind of challenge to your world view. Now on the 11th, Saturn does go into a retrograde. Now when Saturn goes retrograde, and it's going to be followed on the 14th by Jupiter, things do tend to slow down. Now obviously Saturn's moved into your sector of work, so it's going to be important to conserve your energy and make sure that you're very precise in where you do invest uh, the things, that the time you have, because if you squander this or try to take on too much, Saturn will soon pull you up. Jupiter going into a retrograde just says that essentially you can't be too uh, assumptive that everything will work out without any hard work and application. But because you're someone who's very responsible usually, that's not necessarily going to be such a hit for you. It's just basically saying that maybe you need to look into the deeper, more spiritual side of the things that you enjoy and not just the outer, uh, more playful elements. On the 12th, however, Mercury joins up with Venus and the North Node in the sign of Gemini. This is significant because it's the ruler of Gemini, just like it's the guide planet of your sign. So if you do need to have an interview, write an application out, uh, reassemble your uh, uh, resume, or do any kind of professional training, this would be a very good time to go for it. Now on the 21st, the Sun also joins up with this gathering and proven amount of energy in the sign of Gemini. So your ambitions and goals are really coming strongly into focus. There's also a new moon on the 22nd. If you can do something which gives you personal satisfaction, you're really getting it together. Now this new moon is also going to be forging a link with Saturn. So your natural self-discipline could be something that someone you encounter who is in a position of influence can actually be hugely impressed by. So don't be fearful of trotting out uh, your achievements so far or explaining to people that you do know where you have to really apply yourself. It may be the less glamorous side of an application, but it's something that really can resonate very strongly. Now on the 29th of May, Mercury makes a quick move into the sign of Cancer, which for you is very much to do with your interactions at the friendship level. It may be a case of who, as much as what you know, in terms of those big goals and ambitions. But this is also reminding you to make time to have some sociable moments, as long as those more worthy, busy, worldly interactions that are going to be keeping you busy this month.
This brings us into June. Now Mars moved mid-month in May into your opposite sign and from the 9th through to the 17th of this month links with Neptune. This is a, a very potentially distorting combination and be careful if you're trying to do any kind of deals in business. Someone may not be all they seem. Also the Sun is squaring up with Mars through to the 18th from the 1st so there could be some frustration if you are encountering someone who's not necessarily enabling you in the way that uh, that combination between Venus, uh, previously Mercury, and then the Sun and the North Node have been asking you to go for. And perhaps it's a clash of personalities in some way, but we all have to understand this politics. So just be conscious of this. But the annular uh, lunar eclipse, which occurs in the sign of Sagittarius on the 5th, just also reminds you to stay in tune with your feelings around those ambitions. Don't go against that inner voice. It will never fail any of us. Now on the 18th, Mercury goes into a retrograde in Cancer. Work hard at your friendships from now to the end of the month because the potential for some kind of misunderstanding is going to be high because Mercury is not particularly happy in the sign of Cancer, which of course is ruled by the Moon and therefore it's watery. Whereas as you know, Mercury is very much to do with your logic and cold analysis. So that can get distorted anyway. However, the 21st is a much happier event because the Sun moves into the same sector as Mercury and there's also a annular solar eclipse in Cancer. So for the next six months, this is an opportunity for you to be much more expansive around your friendships. And the things that you aspire to that are less material, that are more to do with your heart's desire, those are also going to come more sharply into focus. The 25th sees Venus end a retrograde, which may have led to the odd misunderstanding. Perhaps someone almost thinking that you're too charming at times. But we know in life that sometimes we're, we, we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't. And Venus retrograde could be a little bit like that for you. However, on the 28th, there's such a significant event this month because Mars moves into Aries. It's going to be here for the rest of the year. This is such a passionate place in its transit, especially for you. This is your eighth solar house. Whatever you desire, Virgo, it's going to, you can turn the dial up to max for the rest of this year because Mars is going to be here through to the 6th of January 2021. Whether it is improving your financial prospects or getting up close and personal in an intimate way and having a successful alliance with someone romantically or in business, or it is to do with more a more spiritual transformation, Mars is going to give you a furnace of desire, which is going to be fascinating for a sign like yours, which can be so cool and really quite focused on keeping that balance around all your resources and your energies. Mars could surprise you in this time, but in the most delightful of ways, even if it does challenge you too. Now it has to be said, Virgo, that July is a very complex month. This is because we have another annular eclipse on the 5th in the sign of Capricorn, which obviously is for you all about your self-expression, your potential to have fun, be creative. But it's facing up to uh, the sun in the sign of Cancer. So it's finding some kind of balance around your activities. It's possible, for example, that one friend could feel that you're neglecting them in favour of another friend, or perhaps some kind of new interest is engaging you more than perhaps even a personal relationship. So there is something to balance out on the back of that eclipse. But it's also true to say that on the 12th, Mercury does go into forward motion, which is going to be hugely helpful in your 11th solar house. But on the 20th, we have a new moon. And this new moon is quite tricky. New moons are usually times of opportunity. But this one in Cancer is actually going to be opposite Saturn, which has retreated back into the sign of Capricorn. So this can be quite a cold, chill wind. If you think about it, the moon is about how we emote 
and how receptive we are, and Saturn is about restriction. So it's possible that if a friendship is weak or a group involvement isn't quite your cup of tea, or there's some longer-term aim you've got that's not really working for you emotionally, it's going to need to be looked at during the next couple of weeks, which sees the Sun then switch on the 22nd into its home zone of uh, Leo but not before it's gone into a series of oppositions. Firstly with Jupiter, then with Pluto, then with Saturn on the back of that new moon. So I think you should be prepared that July could see some struggles in terms of keeping uh, adherence to what you set out to do at the start of the month. You could be quite surprised by who provides the challenge to you. Uh, and it's certainly not a month to take things for granted. And once the sun moves into Leo, I feel the natural response from you may be to retreat a little bit and have some time to think about things, which would be entirely understandable. And also, Mercury comes out of shadow on the 26th, which is fab because then it gets back to the place where the retrograde first began. And that tangle may provide some kind of solution which sees you looking at that whole friendship, relationship, future direction situation with a completely fresh pair of eyes. Now there is, ironically, one superb influence that goes on all through this month, and it is Mars in a sextile with uh, Venus. So it, if your focus is very much on career attainment, that can be very, very good. Someone can be very impressed by your dynamism, your passion, and your business likeness, but at the same time, your ability to get on at a more personal level. As we come into August, so there is a full moon on the 5th. This full moon in the sign of Aquarius suggests that there could be someone around you. Keep out for a person who may not be articulating their dissatisfaction with you, but they may have some. But if you are on the end of some negative vibes, because this full moon links with Uranus, don't blow it out of proportion. It could just be that we all have to accept that not everybody is for us. And you may just get a little bit more of an understanding of who could be inclined to indulge in the dark arts or to gossip a bit and this kind of stuff. And it's important that you stick with what makes and defines you. This is going to be assisted on the 8th by Venus moving into Cancer. This is a lovely transit and you're going to get a lot of reassurance from this about who really does matter in your life. If you're single, there could be a friend who can become so much more. If you're involved in a relationship, you and yours can celebrate the things you have in common. In fact, from the 11th through to the 21st, the Sun in Leo is forging a fantastic angle to Mars. This suggests that your natural penchant for research digging beneath the surface and thinking very carefully about what makes things tick can actually be a huge asset for you. So even if you're not making any demonstrably obvious moves, you can still be making progress by what you're learning and how you're preparing yourself for when the sun moves into your sign later this month, which happens first with Mercury, your ruler, joining you again on the 20th, and the sun returns to you on the 20, 23rd. You're going to feel a real sense of uh, being reborn. Your physical vitality will leap. You're going to feel much more sense of conviction. You're really going to be uh, feeling much more in the moment. It is true in the last two weeks of this month that Mars is clashing with Saturn. And that's quite a tasty uh, uh, alliance, you could put it this way. It's just saying to you that when it comes to being open this year, that's a definite positive through the your species of Uranus, but diving into things without due care and, and diligence is not such a good thing, particularly on the back of that influence. But you know this in spades because you're a naturally cautious person. From the 27th to the 31st, Venus in Cancer does oppose Pluto uh, in Capricorn. There could be someone you encounter who really sets your pulse racing. Just be sure that you're clear of what their motives are and also what yours are too. As you make your way into September, uh, Virgo, there is on the second a full moon in your opposite sign. 
If there is somebody you're involved with that you're not quite seeing eye to eye, the angle this full moon has with Uranus suggests that this is a perfect opportunity in the run up to the new moon in your sign on the 17th to try to bring that things out into the open and try to clear the air. Now on the 6th, Venus is moving into a delicate location for you, to be frank. It moves into the sign of Leo. Now Venus loves being in Leo, but for you it could mean that someone's going to show a, a rather um, discreet interest in you. Perhaps they're going to let you know that they have a big crush on you, but they don't necessarily want to shout it from the rooftops at that particular moment in time. And you may understand where they're coming from. If there has been some kind of breach of relationship trust with an existing tie, perhaps this is a moment when you are thinking very carefully about if, frankly, you want to continue. But equally, there could be somebody new coming into your world or someone from your past can yet have a big impact. Your ruler Mercury, however, also moves on the 6th into the sign of Libra, which for you is about resources. So the creativity and hard work you've been showing of late has a chance to convert into something more meaningful. Also, for the rest of the month, someone could surprise you with a mystery gift or doing something that you're just not expecting that really can give you a fantastic lift. On the 9th, however, Mars slams on the brakes. That's why it's in uh, the sign of Aries for such a long time this year. But also, on the 13th, Jupiter goes forwards, and that's something we can all celebrate. Jupiter's retrograde for those four months may have seen something that meant a lot to you, just seemed like it had slowed down, but now it can start to speed up. You can feel much more self-assured, and that's going to be boosted by the new moon in your sign on the 17th. However, on the 19th through to the 26th, there is a clash between Mercury and Pluto. You could encounter someone who is a bit dogmatic around your financial situation. Perhaps it's going to be a bank manager, or perhaps you're applying for some kind of financial product, and someone could seem to be picky and difficult. Then again, it's important that you don't splash out on something that's not absolutely essential in the last phase of this month. On the 23rd, the sun moves into, uh, into Libra, out of your sign, and just feeling confident about your sense of self-worth and also security in general is going to be a theme right through to the end of the month. But Mercury then moves on the 27th into Scorpio, a great location for you. Your mind can pick up speed, but also you can be very analytical. On the 29th, Saturn ends its retrograde, and that is something, again, we all will be punching the air about, because that slowing down that's been going on finally ends, and it's also a really important time, because from now through to when Saturn moves into Aquarius on the 17th of December, it is going to be going forward. So generally, your creative hard work of the last two and a quarter, two and a half years, has a chance to really start to flourish. As the month comes to a close, so really count your blessings, but also focus on what gives you that key sense of security. Remember, you're an earth sign, you like to see tangible progress. As you come into October, we have two full moons, one on the first day and one on the 31st day. This is a blue moon. We've not had this since March 2018, so it's something to really feel excited about. But the full moon on the first day is in the sign of Aries because it's opposite the sun's location in Libra. It's about balancing your resources. And the interesting thing about this month is that although Venus moves into your sign on the third, which gives you a real sense of equanimity when it comes to your relationships. From the 8th through to the 21st, the Sun's going to be clashing with Jupiter, Pluto and Saturn in turn. This suggests that October is not the best of months to be splashing out money or being affected by uh, sudden urges or uh, Im impulses or compulsions. So if there is a material item that you really want this month, it falls upon you really, Virgo, to really check out 
if it is really needed. Now that may be uh, that you can do this by talking to someone who tends to be very honest with you, but really cares about you because you're a frank opinion, because they may be able to see the big picture in a way which may be more difficult for you at this time, because that sense of desire which is coming through Mars, remember, is going to be heightened even more from this set of influences. Also, for the first three weeks of this month, Mars is clashing with Pluto. This is about as impulsive as it can possibly get, but it could also be you can find yourself uh, with your pulse racing about someone you're drawn to from a romantic viewpoint. This could be pure lust. So again, I refer my uh, right honourable uh, gentleman or lady to my earlier point about Venus entering your sign. It gives you that sense of equanimity and shrewd, careful judgment around relationships. But whether you will listen to it or not is, is interesting because the passion that's going to be aroused by all these energies is incredibly high. On the 14th, however, Mercury does go into a retrograde. If you're thinking of buying a car, a new mode of transport, or you need to send an important letter or email, really, again, scrutinize things very carefully. The 16th is a new moon in Libra, but this too is clashing with Saturn and Pluto. So again, this is a month, October, despite these, uh, these, double new, these double full moons, that you're trying to control your impulses, either in a relationship or financial sense, as best you can. Actually, in terms of a relationship, from the 18th to the 24th, Venus forges, in your sign, a beautiful link to Pluto. So if someone's really sincere, you're likely to find out then. The 23rd sees the Sun move into Scorpio. It's got, not going to take all the energy away from Mercury's retrograde, which then, on the 28th, winds back into Libra. Has there been a conversation about money? You may need to revisit it again towards the end of this month. Then Venus moves out of your sign and into Libra on the 28th. But the good news is even if some money has been going out, some can come in on the back of this. On the 31st is the second full moon, and this one is in Taurus, your sister Earth sign. If there is a debate to be had, remember at the start of the year Mars was making you passionate gave you this energy for the whole year, but the moon was making you very sensitive. Uh, so you need to find a balance between the two. So if there is a conversation or debate to be had, try to ensure that you're factually absolutely right, but also that you try to keep that sense of goodwill intact. As you come into November, Mercury is still retrograde, but on the 3rd goes forwards, and on the 11th returns to the sign of Scorpio. I think if someone has been owing you some money, or there's been some intense discussions about money, it can start to be sorted out at that time. Also on the 14th, Mars goes forwards, and that's definitely a hooray moment. But from now, from the middle of November through to the end of this at the end of this year, really drive forwards if you are wanting to be more entrepreneurial. The 15th sees a new moon in the sign of Scorpio, but also a link with Neptune. This is gorgeous for you. You could find that you have a beautiful discussion from now until the middle of December, which really sets you at peace, particularly around a close relationship. On the 19th, Mercury comes out of shadow, so that's great. And on the 22nd, the Sun moves into Sagittarius, but Venus moves into Scorpio. Your words are going to have a magical effect on someone in the run-up to Christmas. It's about using that energy wisely. On the 30th, there is another eclipse. This time, this one is in Gemini. So we're talking again about uh, the professional side of your situation. Your feelings are going to be very close to the surface on the back of this eclipse. Could see you blurt something out, so try to slow that down. But it's the classic work-life balance issue, which at this time of year, especially if you have kids or a busy job uh, or your own business, it's a pretty frenetic time anyway, spinning all those plates. And that's certainly going to be the case in the following two weeks.
This brings us into the final month of the year, and on the second, Mercury, your ruler, moves into your fourth solar house. A great location if you're thinking of getting your planning for Christmas and the festivities in, in early order, because you can be very or organized and let everyone know what you want to achieve, but just be aware that Mercury in this sector is not at its absolute best. So don't make assumptions. Make sure, double check that people have the same view of the arrangements as you. The 14th sees a total solar eclipse, the first of the year, and this is so powerful. I think if you're wanting to move in the next six months into a, a newer, bigger property or downsize, or you're wanting to add to your family, start a business from home, this is awesome because it's supercharged with the energy of Mars in Aries and it's going to go right into the first five months of 221. The sixth thing sees Venus move out of that area of talk and thought and into your home zone. There could be some last minute decoration for the Christmas celebrations or buying some furnishings to make your abode as comfy as possible, especially if you've got gas. On the 17th, Saturn moves into Aquarius, where it's going to be for the next two and a quarter years. It's joined on the 20th by Jupiter. These are massive structural changes. The energy that Capricorn has brought over the last couple of years for Saturn for you has meant that relationships have either made or been made or been broken, particularly of a romantic variety. But if they have been made, you've survived something really quite important. And now you're moving on to a different set of activities. And it could be about your work, your job, that really are going to come into view. But with Jupiter's assistance, there's so much to go for. The 21st sees the Sun move into Capricorn, as it always does at this time of year, joined by your ruler Mercury. So there can some, be some opportunities for fun, for playfulness, as this year comes to a close. However, there is a full moon on the 31st in uh, Cancer, so it's going to be important as you make your plans for that event that you do try to be mindful of all the stakeholders in your world to ensure that everyone feels part of what you're planning. Which brings us to the end of quite a momentous year, which gives you fantastic opportunities to grow, to evolve, to demonstrate how talented you are, Virgo. I'm really excited about 2020 for you. If you'd like to know what this year holds for you as an individual, please order your personal horoscope. If you buy it in 2019, I'll give you the rest of 2019 free as well. If you buy it in 2020, I'll give you 12 months from the point of order. See the link beneath this video. But for now, good luck and goodbye.